During these difficult times caused by the virus pandemic, I want to say hi to all my family and friends all over the world. I hope that you are keeping safe and well. Fortunately, I'm okay here in the southern French Alps. Now in April, we've still got lots of snow on the ski slopes opposite, and masses more higher up in the valley. Sadly, we had to stop skiing a few weeks ago when the lockdown came in force here in France. Normally, we'd ski until Easter. I'm still a keen skier, and I love these mountains, although they're far different from the Virunga volcanoes and their tropical rainforest. But now, age 80, and after a triple bypass and prostate cancer, I'm in the most vulnerable category regarding this virus. I have to be very careful, and I check my temperature, pulse and blood pressure every day. So far, all is well. With the severe lockdown here in France these past weeks, I have used the time to update and publish the second edition of my iBook, The Wandering Gorillas. This describes our family adventures and my research during the early days of the 1970s when I was the first scientist to work with Diane Fossey and the first to fall foul of her temper. So I completed my doctoral research studying gorillas in the forests of Kahuzi Biega in the Congo. I have now added an afterword to my iBook called Tragedies in the Mist, Who Killed Diane Fossey and Why? I have not written about Diane for over 30 years. I did not want to upset the conservation programs, environmental and tourism advances made in Rwanda since we started our research there 50 years ago. Now it is time for me to speak out. My iBook is now available on Apple Books and also on Amazon Kindle. Though the Kindle version does not allow you to view the dozens of photos available in iBooks. I hope that during this period of stay at home you'll get a copy of my iBook and catch up on the lives of the characters you've seen in my videos, both human and gorillas. My iBook complements the videos and gives you a more intimate look into my unique experiences studying our primate cousins in their beautiful forest home. The final chapter is called Whose Forests Are These? I explain that saving the gorillas depends on saving their forest environment for the sake of the planet and for humanity. In my book I make a plea to help the people in Rwanda who were most maligned and badly treated by Diane Fossey and even by me during my early ignorant days. These are the Batwa pygmies, who Diane labelled as poachers. She called for them to be shot on sight. In reality, the forest had been their home for many thousands of years, until they were evicted when the national park was created for the gorillas. Today the gorillas are safe and thriving, and their numbers are increasing. In contrast, the Batwa pygmy people have many problems outside their forest home, especially of health and nutrition. They have seen their tiny population reduced by a third in the last few decades. Please visit their website at iimpo.org and do what you can to help them. Finally, thank you all for showing an interest in my research. For the moment, Stay safe and well, and I hope you enjoy reading about my unique experiences in Central Africa.